So we open with House of the Dragon. The Targaryens are large and in charge. They got 10 adult dragons. The king dying, he ain't got no heir. So he's like, look, before y'all go to war, we gonna have a council so we can go on and get this heir before I get in the ground and everybody starts acting a fool. So there were two claims to the throne. Rhaenys, the oldest daughter of the king, she ain't get it because, you know, misogyny. They chose Viserys. You know what? I need the girls on Love and Hip Hop to get some of these wigs. If you're going to do blonde white people hair, you need to get one of these wigs because these wigs is wigging. Tyler Perry, take a note. It's now the ninth year of King Viserys Targaryen's reign. 172 years before the death of the Mad King Arius and the birth of his daughter, Princess Daenerys Targaryen. The burning heifer. Child, now we in the clouds, butterfly in the sky, dragons fly so high. Take a look, it's in the book of Game of Thrones. So we got a princess who was flying on the dragon. She's giving us a Daenerys tea. But then with all that inbreed, no wonder they look alike. So the flying heifer's name is Princess Rhaenyra, and she go to see her pregnant mama who don't want her flying around on dragons. I'd have popped her. I don't care if they is my dragons. You ain't flying on them. Her mama tell her get in the shower. She smelled like outside. <laughs> Over in the king's council, there's an alliance in the free cities. So the triarchy that's formed in the free cities is taking out pirates. But Lord Colton's like, look, they getting rid of pirates now, but they could cause us problems later. Let's nip it in the bud. Lord Corliss, Lord Corliss. So we getting ready for the tournament game because the king's about to have a baby. He hoping for a son. He's like, it's a son. It's a son. It's going to be another girl. And now um, the princess is upset because she's like, if I had a penis, I could be king. And also I'd be daddy's favorite and not just a cupbearer. However, in the Iron Throne Room, the princess goes to greet her uncle. Her daddy don't know he's here yet. Her uncle look a little dead, but he give her a gift. He give her some Valerian steel. Oh, we see that uh, the princess got a little less thing going on with her lady in waiting. Back with the king, it looks like he got some type of infection. So the king goes see his wife in the bath, and he's like, this child is a boy. It's going to be a girl, I'm telling you. She tell him, look, this is my last time out. If this ain't a boy, baby, I'm sorry. I done bore eight kids for you. I can't do no more. I'm putting this puss out to pasture. Out with the uncle who's the command of the king's watch. They going to clean up the city. He's giving me a Joffrey tea. So it gets real ugly and real bloody. And the next day, the grand council calls him in and they like, girl, what are you doing? We don't just hack people up like that. He said, look, I was just cleaning up the city before the grand tourney when we got all the nobles in town. Child, but they like, by the way, you done ran out on your wife. He like, I don't need to see her. Lord, but over at the brothel, the brother getting it in. It looks like he's in love with the stripper. But now it's time for the king's tourney. And the queen started her labor. I feel like the queen going to pass and the baby going to be a girl. The baby might croak too. He looking too forward to it. Let's celebrate a birth with death. Yay, tournaments. <laughs> Lord Corliss said the same thing I said. Should we celebrate the birth of the king with all this death? But uh, meanwhile, back at the Heezy, the mom ain't doing so well and the babe is in breach. So sadly, I was right. The king's wife's gone past, but they might be able to do a cesarean to save the babe. Child, back on the battlefield, a fool got knocked off his horse and he's like, I'm gonna stab you. But he got one of them ball chain mace things and he's like, okay, Heffa, let's go. Well, the baby survived and it's a son. Back at the council, they trying to figure out who the heir's gonna be, but I thought the baby lived. Wouldn't it be Balin, the new babe? So right now, Damon, the brother's supposed to be the heir, but don't nobody really want that. Meanwhile, the brother eavesdropping, hearing them talk about him. The king's like, look, he's my brother and he gonna stay on the council and that's that on that. Oh, I guess the baby didn't make it. But the king get irritated that everybody try, trying to get their people on the throne. And he's like, I can't even mourn properly. 
Lord, so now the king's hand go and send the princess's lady in waiting to go comfort the king in his chambers. Give him a little pick me up, puss. So the brother hired out one of them brothels for the city watch. And it then got back to the king and the council, and they like, you know, he's giving a usurper tea. Ooh, he called the king's son the heir for a day. That's cold. That's cold. Foul. The heir for a day. Mm, how you gonna make fun of a baby? So the king calls his brother to the iron throne room. And he's like, did you say it? The king is pissed. He's like, look, I done had your back at court when everybody else wanted to get rid of you. My family dead and you out here cracking jokes with hoes? The brother's upset that he ain't been asked to be the hand of the king. The king said, look, you going back to your wife in the rune stone and my daughter going to be the heir. I'm going to give you this right here. Uh. So now we in the basement looking at an old dragon skull and the pappy asks his daughter, what you see when you look at the dragons? So he tell her, by the way, you going to be queen. And it ends with everybody pledging fealty to the king and his new heir, Princess Ray Whoever. Well, I'm going to see you soon. Let's get to Housewives. It's time for some trailer reviews. Ooh, spooky season's almost upon us. I can't believe summer is over. Although it's San Francisco, like the weather never really changes. Like it'll start to get warm here in the next couple weeks, but then I'm going to need a new winter coat. So the first trailer is for Spirit Halloween the movie. Wait, the store got a movie now. What are they going to do? Scare us to death with those cheap costumes? Oh, God, we got Christopher Lloyd. I'm in if Christopher Lloyd's in it. You know, when I used to do telemarketing for the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, I actually called him and, see, and he sent us a $400 donene. Oh, my God, it is. It is the effing store. The store has a movie. The kids are going to lock themselves in the, in the pop-up Halloween shop overnight. I mean, they just said, let's just make a commercial and make them pay for it. So Christopher Lloyd gives some family a final notice. I guess they owe some money. And the mama calls upon the gods. Girl, why couldn't you call on the gods to give you some coin? So he dies. I don't know. I mean, if you could call on magic to kill somebody, why couldn't you call on magic to get you some coin? So these boys is walking around the spirit Halloween store. I, I just, it's an infomercial. It's an infomercial, and we're paying for it. Don't take your kids to see this. They made a movie out of a commercial. I can't. Bitch, stop clocking my pussy miles. Stop clocking my pussy miles. Bitch, stop clocking my pussy miles. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. This ain't your odometer. Not your odometer. Not your odometer. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. 